Hi, I'm Erwin Perot, a furniture designer, maker of Perot Design and a woodworking educator of wood skills. And today I'd like to talk about a uh, very large upgrade I've uh, been able to perform uh, in the last few days. I've, uh, I've added a second bandsaw to my, my workshop, my studio. Uh, if you continue watching the video, you'll, you'll see the uh, reasons why I have a second bandsaw now. And uh, some comparisons from the first to the second bandsaw and the, uh, the advantages or the, uh, the features that the second bandsaw has that the first one doesn't have and how I've incorporated both bandsaws into my furniture making now. So you'll see uh, I've had to literally disassemble both saws to get to, uh, to move one saw from the original saw from the upper level here to the lower level, set it up, it had to be disassembled in uh, three or four components, very heavy, and uh, the second saw had to be transported here in, the, in parts, and actually moved in here in parts and reassembled. But I don't mind the exercise because I, I've become uh, acquainted or familiarized with the, the bandsaw. Now these, these bandsaws, the original bandsaw, uh, as I'll talk further in, in the video, uh, I've been using for 30 years in my furniture making and all along in all my businesses. So I'm very, very intimately familiar with the saw and how to set it up and make sure the wheels are coplanar and the blade guides are adjusted and uh, the type of blades I can use and understanding how to feed wood through at what speeds and everything. Now it has been upgraded, that original saw, although I've, uh, I've had to uh, install the original fence now because I've moved the, the upgraded fence to the new saw and you'll see that. So the new saw is uh, quite a bit more uh, interesting looking. It has new features, nicer hardware, nicer levers and nicer wheels and nicer uh, uh, adjustments and the motor is enclosed in the base and it has a mobile a mobile stand so I can move it around. It's a, it, it looks to be a more rugged version of the other saw. I just used it a little bit in the last few days but I, I can see it's going to perform well for me in the future. So I'm, I'm going to be incorporating both of these saws into my furniture making likely with different blades but I've also, they're both set up with riser blocks so they can both handle uh, uh, a 12 inch capacity at the moment although that wasn't the original plan. The original plan was to reduce the original saw, the original pan saw back down to 6 inches and remove the riser block but and I realized I need some better enough compatibility between the band saws. So I reintroduced, I reinserted the riser block with uh, quite a bit of effort. <laughs> I had to re disassemble the saw again and all parts of it and reassemble it again and be able to do that. Realign all the wheels, the upper and lower wheels. So that's all set up and now I can transfer, I can move plates around 105 inch plates between the two saws and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate that, how I do that in the uh, rest of the video. So uh, stay tuned and uh, you'll find out more about how I've gone from one bad saw to two bad saws in my uh, furniture making. I'm Norm Perolo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So this has been my primary bandsaw for uh, just about 30 years now. I purchased it in 1994 and I've been using it uh, extensively for, uh, for over uh, for close to 30 years or uh, if not 30 years, 1994, not sure what month. It's, it's worked well for me and I've upgraded it since and I've I've actually used this in my business as my sole bandsaw for, for that long. If you've watched any of my earlier videos, I talk about my jewelry box business and uh, how I started with furniture making. And this is the, uh, the tool that's been instrumental all along. So I uh, have high price for this bandsaw. And I come across in the uh, next part of the video, you'll see the, uh, the replacement for this. So I wanted to sell this to because I I'm not a large fan of, uh, of just acquiring equipment for no, no reason, but then I began to think about it and I, I realized that having two band sizes could be beneficial. I could have one set up for one, uh, one type of joinery or one type of cut and the second one for a different type of cut, or I could uh, 
I have this set up specifically for curve work or for finer, more detailed work. And that's what led me to actually uh, keep the saw. So I moved it to the lower part of my workshop, which many of you have never seen. It's, um, well, I have most of my uh, machinery here. I have a thickness, larger thickness planer, uh, an XYZ uh, horizontal mortising machine, a jointer, another workbench, my, my wood storage, all sorts of dust collection, which I don't really use as much anymore. I have a veneering table with a vacuum veneer set up and my sharpening station right ahead of me. So I made some room here and I've cleared everything out and re, uh, rearranged everything in this area of the workshop, which is this part of the workshop. The lower part is just as large as the upper part, along with some help. I disassembled the saw and brought it down parts and uh, reassembled it, which was uh, a good exercise because I had not done that in a number of years. So when I first set it up, I set it up, I reset it up with the, uh, without the riser block, thinking that I could just use it for smaller, more detailed work. But then I realized that I have to, I would have to purchase uh, shorter blades, 93 and a half inch blades, as opposed to the, uh, the taller 105 inch blades for a Delta 14 inch. And so to make everything compatible, I, <laughs> I reinserted the riser block uh, with much effort because I had to literally disassemble part of the bandsaw to do it and needed some help to do it. So, uh, so here we are. So this is almost exactly what it looked like when it was in the upper level, the same saw I've been using for 30 years. I've also built up the fence. Now this fence is interesting because this fence I almost gave away a number of years ago and uh, thankfully I never did. And it is one of the, uh, it is the actual original uh, rip fence that came with the saw and I've added this uh, this wood part to have a taller uh, a taller fence but it's an interesting fence because it dates the design dates from the late 1930s and there's uh, somebody on YouTube that I was watching and he actually restored a 1942 version of this saw which isn't much different from this and it has this uh, this fence as part of the saw so it's testament to uh, how good this fence is how design was uh, very, very good design throughout a number of uh, maybe 60, 70 years. So what I've done is I've added the taller wood fence, but I've also added the low rise version of it, similar to what I have uh, at the, uh, when I had this up in the upper level. And it's got magnetic uh, mounts, so it just attaches. I can, uh, by loosening the, uh, the fence, I can bring it in and actually uh, bring the guide down right, to, right very low for, for safety and for uh, for more uh, rigidity in the knee uh, and the uh, blade itself so it's uh, one of the rare uh, specimens of a fence that actually has a, a micro adjust and this is uh, it's unusual so I'm glad I never I never actually gave it away and uh, so I've been I found it and I put it back on and with the shorter rails and, uh, and it works really well so I described this uh, this feature, this uh, low-rise fence, in earlier videos also, and I like I like how it works. It's a little tricky to get the magnets to line up with the uh, with the metal parts. So I have it currently set up with a half-inch uh, wide rip uh, three TPI uh, resaw blade, but that's only temporary. I've ordered narrower blades for it. I think three eighths and a quarter inch at one hundred five inches. And I'll be using those blades. I've also ordered a set of cool blocks for it because I only have one set and I've got the original metal blocks. They're quite noisy and I don't like them. I like I much prefer cool blocks. And this saw again has been upgraded with a one horsepower uh, commercial motor with uh, the electrics have been upgraded and dust collection introduced. I've also uh, incorporated a, uh, a upgraded uh, tension adjustment with an upgraded spring. Main, main difference between this saw and the uh, and the other saw you'll see later is that is uh, the hardware is much beefier. It, it is uh, the the base is completely different. It's enclosed with the motor within, and the table size, interestingly enough, is a 16 inch by 16 inch. These uh, original versions had a 14 by 14 inch uh, table, so I had to make some changes also because of the different dimensions of the table. The guide system is very similar on both saws. Everything else is. Well, it's certainly well. It's a 30-year-old saw, and it's amazingly in good condition. It almost looks new. The bearings are, are uh, very good. No problems with the bearings. Nothing's ever broken on it. There's a lot of cast components, the trunnions, 
I never had problems with uh, with any components breaking. And, uh, used it extensively, like I said. So, so we'll uh, we'll talk about the uh, the newer saw now. <laughs> So this is the uh, new to me uh, Delta 14 inch bandsaw that I've acquired in the last uh, few days and I've uh, spent a bit of time detailing it and uh, cleaning it up but it was in very good condition it was very uh, had very little use from uh, what I can see from what the original owner told me and uh, it was a very good uh, purchase and I know um, I've always wanted a second bandsaw so I could actually set one up for one operation and set a different up for a different operation or use a, for, or so use a second bandsaw for more curved work or detailed work because the curved work does involve a, a narrower blade and this is almost always set up with a uh, with a resaw blade, a half inch 3 TPI resaw blade because I just do a lot of resawing. So it's uh, essentially the same uh, construction as the other saw. The base is enclosed, has a uh, one and a half horsepower motor more commercial uh, on-off switch that have the riser block included. All the hardware is uh, slightly upgraded, it's a little more uh, shiny metal. And it has the uh, tension release, which I like, an automatic built-in factory tension release, so I can release the tension when it's not in use for a period of days. So I've only really been using it for a few days now, and uh, well, along with some help, I've had to take it apart completely and re reassemble it here. And that, I always enjoy that exercise because I, I get to familiarize myself with the machine. So the table came apart, the base was uh, separated, the lower part separated from the riser block and the upper part separated along with the trellis. So uh, like I said, it's in very, very good shape. The bearings are, uh, are fine, everything's good. The, uh, the tires are in good shape too, interestingly enough. I would say it's a 15 year old saw but you would never know from looking at it. It's a uh, it's very good condition. Now it does have, uh, along with the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it has a larger table, this version. This is, uh, from what I understand, it's an X5 version. It's the last version assembled and uh, built in the US for Delta. And uh, every other batch afterwards was built offshore. I'm not sure in China or in Taiwan, but this is one of the last ones. And, it has labels all over about being built in the U.S. So you can access the, uh, the motor, the uh, pulleys. It has a door at the motor, so I can access the motor. So I've cleaned that all up. Reinforced everything. Now another feature I like about it is the mobile base. I've never had a pants on a mobile base. So I don't have to move it around. If I have any larger boards, I can move it forward. Longer boards, I should say. And uh, the dust collection is pretty cool. Unlike my original saw, where I had to sort of jig up some dust collection with uh, under the uh, the lower blade guides and uh, under the lower uh, wheel assembly. This has a built-in chute that goes back many years. Uh, the design and it, everything that falls down here through from the chute from the bottom uh, blade guides through the bottom wheel. Is directed straight out to the uh, my dust collector, and it's almost a direct connection. It's just below the uh, on the floor below. It's just below, so that's pretty cool. I don't have any extra hoses or anything. But, uh, <laughs> and the tracking is correct within the blade guides and I've been doing this for <laughs> 30 years now. So it does have the, uh, the extension, extended uh, blade guide cover for the riser block and the mobile base. And again, this is, a, this is also a, a part of the upgrade kit with the riser block, the extended aluminum, uh, extended aluminum uh, blade cover. Now the fence system this fence system, if you watched any of my earlier videos, this fence system was on my first bandsaw, the one that I showed you just earlier. So I've actually uh, removed it from that bandsaw and, and transferred it here. And that was a little bit of some, some uh, adjustments because again, this table is uh, 16 by 16 and the original is 14 by 14. So, uh, so I had to make some changes, and, but it also, but it works well. I set, set it up so I can bring it right up to the uh, blade with the uh, the low-rise uh, fence that uh, is attached to the magnets. 
it also does have a micro adjust option that I can use. It's a credit fence, it's pretty standard. So that works really well, and I like it. But uh, another little change I made is I, uh, I forgot to mention on the other side, is I introduced uh, zero clearance uh, inserts, and I've also drilled some holes through the uh, three holes in the zero clearance inserts for air to enter. And that's, uh, so I've done that on both on both fence saws now. And uh, so aside from that, there is another cover here that I can open to access the actual uh, Another feature of this saw, uh, you can tell it was a premium uh, and a very, with a very premium uh, deluxe saw, all the hardware is chrome. All the, uh, the adjustments for the table, the angle of the table are larger. They're levers as opposed to knobs and they're metal. I think zinc coated or uh, chrome, and everything else is uh, metallic chrome, and it has the, uh, the beefed up spring for the higher tension, and I've introduced a, a work light for it. So I'm very happy with it, and uh, surprisingly, uh, it's very rigid with the mobile face. I wasn't sure how that was going to perform, so I really haven't put it to too much use so far, but, uh, but it looks good. It's essentially the same saw. That's the one I have uh, at the lower level. I'll know more in the future, but I think it, uh, it's a nice saw. So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy, my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced and uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered and also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books both in print and digital format on woodworking and uh, all my online courses and uh, I offer, also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and uh, in woodworking in general. So enjoy.